What is up scrub fam, Pat O'Neill here and I am back with the first of several videos talking about set 7 for the Dragon Ball Super Card game for the limited format. Many of you guys will be having a pre-release not this weekend but next weekend for set 7. So I feel like it would be super helpful for you guys to go super in depth on set 7 and talk about the cards in the set and how they stack up in limited. Limited, for those of you guys who do not know, stands for Limited Resources. It is a format where you either draft booster packs around a table with friends, where you take turns picking cards out of packs and then try to assemble a 40 card deck that way, or Sealed, which is what most pre-releases will be doing, which is you are given six booster packs, and using that limited pool of six booster packs, you have to construct a 40 card deck and play it in a tournament. Limited is a really skill intensive format uh, it really rewards play skill as well as deck building and for many of you guys who are not familiar with the format I feel like it's super helpful to have this handy dandy guide that explains you know each of the colors in depth uh, and what to look out for in your pool so that way you can make the best deck possible and succeed at your pre-release events so today we're going to be discussing the red cards and we will continue on with the blue cards then the green the yellow and finally black and multicolor in the last installment so for those of you guys who have not seen any of my videos on my personal channel before, how we do things here is I grade cards on a scale from 1 to 10. 10 being the best, 1 being the absolute worst. So 10 are cards that are literally unstoppable. You should always play them. If you manage to get them on board, you're basically guaranteed to win. Think of a card like Kami's Power Piccolo. 9 is a bomb card. It's pretty much unbeatable, but there is still some wiggle room for you to lose the game. 8 is usually a good super rare or rare. Uh, or a top tier uncommon or common. You should almost always play eights or better. Seven is a middle of the road super rare or rare, uh, or a pretty good uncommon or common. It's considered an above average card. Six is a lower end super rare, or you know like uh, a card that you will most always play at the common or uncommon level. Five is something that is playable. You should always be striving to play fives or better. You should never really have to go into four or less. Four is basically a filler card that you won't use. It might be something that you use as a sideboard in games two and three. Three is a filler card that you'll only play if you need specific energy ratios. Two is a card that is super niche, only good against one thing, and that's the only time you would ever consider it. And one is unplayable in every single you know, possible imaginable circumstance. So with that out of the way, let us jump right into the cards. So we'll go over to Bandai's website here. Uh, and let me just pull this up here. So yeah, I'm not going to read the cards, we're going to try and go through this as quickly as possible and I just want to hit the highlights. So there are two red leaders in the set, Gohan and Broly. Gohan is really good um, because burst 2 is not a detriment to you in limited at all because when you run out of cards in your deck you just reshuffle and start, your deck, uh, start with a fresh deck. Um, built in burn on the front side makes it so that he's really aggressive and hit the ground running against a lot of people uh, and a lot of different archetypes. In limited. Aggro is king. You don't have many high-end uh, rares or super rares for the most part. And those are usually the finishers you see in Constructed. Those don't exist. So the most common way to beat your opponent is to just swarm them with a bunch of two and three drops. Gohan basically facilitates this by essentially having double strike on the front because he's going to deal a damage and then they still have to actually block the combat as well. So he gets them to a low to a life total early and really lends itself great to the limited format. Uh, his backside, the alliance trigger to get uh, to kill something that's 30k or less. Uh, while nice, it doesn't occur quite as often as you would think because it only really works if you happen to open a lot of green red cards or you are in red green in draft. So that's a nice perk. However, his final ability, which is like the alpha strike where you discard three cards to give your whole board and him 10,000 power, is exactly what you want to close out games. And for that reason, I'm going to give Gohan a 9. Really, really awesome leader. I would argue he's one of the best, if not the best, in the set for uh, playing in limited. So, right. so, next up we have Broly. Uh, so, Broly is pretty good on the front side because he has critical. Critical is super broken. Um, Double Strike and Critical are basically king in this kind of format. Again, because they're just the aggressive keywords that you really want. Uh, field spells on the other hand though, the dormant legend, 
they're not super good in limited. Uh, 15Ks are the name of the game, so like having a 10K removal on his backside when you don't have too many minus abilities uh, in any given pool is not super duper relevant. He's much stronger on the front side than he is on the back, and for that reason, I'm going to give him a 6. All right. Next up, we have Raditz, the Oppressor. It's Borgos. If you guys played Constructed, you guys already know it's the same exact card uh, in Limited. The baseline that we want for a one drop is it has to at least replace itself. If it doesn't draw me a card, it's worthless. <laughs> so this is basically just a way to filter through your deck really consistently, uh, and then it's just combo fodder after that. And for that reason, we're going to give Raditz a six. It's baseline playable, just slightly better than an average uh, card you would open in any given pack. Not as good here as it is in Constructed. All right, next up, we have... Son Goku, Heavenly Salvation. So his ability lets you alliance for free, which is pretty good. Um, but the problem is that three cost for 14k is a horrible rate. And then on top of that, like alliance, like we said before with the Gohan, it doesn't come up all the time. So you maybe get like, you may, might get this like once or twice uh, in a match, if at all. So like for that reason, it's kind of okay. But as I was saying, yeah, 3 for 14k is just a really, really bad rate. I think there are much better playables than Goku, so that's why I'm going to give him a 3. You should really only be looking for this if you just need to shore up slots in your deck. On to a significantly better Goku, we have Mach Speed Kaioken Goku. So he's basically pseudo removal because he gives something 10k. He's basically a negate because he gives something, uh, you know minus 10k and then another card minus 5k if you use the counterplay uh and then he's a 15k body for three which is the you know the rate that we would like to have we want 15k or better on our battle cards unlimited so this guy just does it all removal fogs two attacks uh pretty solid body overall uh i'd be you know ecstatic to open him in the rare slot and that's why i'm going to give goku an eight doesn't win you games but like really strong card overall Next up, we have our first super rare, which is Dependable Brother, Son Gohan. So normally, when we're looking at four drops, we want 20k double strike or better. So Gohan kind of hits the mark. Is four is basically the top end of our curve and limited, unless we open some kind of ridiculous bomb, like a set six Broly uh, with like the six drop with the ability to pitch a card. So usually, your curve is kind of maxing out around four with these 20k double strikes. Games don't usually go too much longer than that. Again, due to the aggressive nature of the format, and blockers and negates are really, really scarce. So that's exactly where you want. Uh, the Evolve Trigger is a pretty massive tempo swing, but it requires a lot of setup, and you know that's not really the main reason to be playing him. I'm going to give Gohan a 7, and it's largely, again, off of the fact that he is you know, slightly uh, above rate for what we want for a 4-drop. Four 4-drop, four 20k double strike is right in the strike zone for what we're looking for. We're going to skip past all these sweet SPRs to another Gohan here. This is uh, Helping Hand, Sun Gohan. Uh, basically, he's a 3 cost for 15k, which is a pretty good rate, like we were just saying. Uh, and it has the flexibility of being negate and a gate. At 3 cost for a negate, it's pretty terrible because you'd rather just play a beater for 3 on your turn anyways. Uh, but at a one cost rate for a 15k negate, he is insane. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to give Gohan a, a split rating. He's basically a six. If you do not have Goten and Trunks, if you do have Goten and Trunks, he's an eight because you can consistently trigger that one cost negate, which is really sweet. Wilderness Training, Sun Gohan. You guys already know it's Majin Buu from set one. It just draws you a card, and like with Raditz, that is the baseline that we want for our one drop. So, Wilderness Chang Sun Gohan gets a six. Uh, you know, slightly better than the average card you're going to open in a pack. Next up is Exalted Trio Sun Goten. So, two cost for a 10k is slightly below rate, which um, but it's at least playable. Like it's not exceptional, but it is playable. So for that reason, I would probably just give him a five straight up, at least at the minimum. The thing is, though, when you have Trunks in play, he gets 5k in double strike. So a two cost 15k double strike is actually kind of nuts. 
so that bumps his value a lot. And this is one of those cards that scales, where Goten is basically a 5 alone if you just don't have the trunks. He's roughly around a 7-ish, which is where I'm probably going to rate him right now. Uh, if you have at least one trunks, if you have two or more trunks, his value skyrockets to an 8, possibly even a 9. This is definitely one of those like build-around cards where... If you open a lot of them, you should be playing them. And in draft, if you are being passed a lot of red cards, you should be taking Gotens and Trunkses at a higher priority than most of the other cards, even some super rares in the set. These are the kind of cards that, that are built. If you build around them, they snowball, and they're nearly unstoppable in a format. So again, yeah, Goten, probably a 7 in the average case, because you're most likely, if you're in red, going to open at least one. If you open no trunks, like I said, he's going to end up being a 5. So next up is Last Resort Vegeta, 3 cost. Uh, you need to basically open a Raditz Leader, a Power Ball, and a Green Ape Vegeta 6-drop for this card to do what it's supposed to do. Uh, efficiently and that's a lot to ask for any sealed pool for draft it's a little bit better because you're a little bit more consistent because uh, you have some more, a greater degree of flexibility of choosing the cards uh, that come your way like by you can basically build around it if you see the signal there that nobody's going to be trying to build off of this combo but again like it's just really rough because you need a specific leader you have to open this card at rare and then you have to open the field spell and then also the ape so it's just you know a huge huge ordeal for the most for most players especially in sealed and three drop 10k is way below rate so for that reason we're going to give last resort vegeta a three if you could somehow pull off the combo great but it, you know the great ape is a six drop 30k single strike that doesn't exactly win you the game in constructed it would win you the game because it drops the the super rare afterwards but again now we're just you know asking for a five card combo in six booster packs that's asking quite a bit all right onward to the next page here and we will come to exalted trio trunks here this is basically the exact same card as goten for many of the same reasons two drop 10k is a five at the minimum it is a playable rate not super efficient not what we're really shooting for however if you manage to scoop up a couple of gotens at least one his value becomes at least a seven which is where he's going to be most of the time if you have at least two gotens then his value is basically roughly around an eight if you have three or more his value is roughly a nine again really strong build around card these are the kind of cards that you want to be prioritizing in draft and if you open multiple of them in limited in your pre-release pool that's awesome. You should be playing these. They're amongst some of the best things you can be playing in limited. Two cost for a 15k crit is nearly backbreaking. If you guys remember our World Martial Arts reviews, two cost 15k critical defines the format. So that's it should explain to you how good this trunks is. Next up is Father Figure Piccolo. So for the most part, you can kind of just skip this guy. There are three other cantrips in red at one cost that are better than what this guy does so I just honestly I see almost no reason to play this guy so I'm gonna give him a three there are you know worse cards you could be playing than him that exist in a, a given card pool uh, and he does draw you a card it's just that of the four cards at one cost in red in this set at common he is the worst one next up is Krillin unforeseen savior don't have to explain this one it's an 8. It's a super combo. It doesn't matter what color you're in. You just take it. As I always say as a disclaimer in all my videos, you do not pick up super combos in the first three picks of a pack. You want to fill your card, your deck with quality cards before you start you know, getting super combos. Drawing extra cards in the combo step is really cool, but if your deck is filled with just mediocre cards, you're just drawing mediocre cards. So again, prioritize those super powerful rares, and there's really good commons and uncommons before you start thinking about picking up super combos. Next up, Exalted Trio Videl. So she searches a top three for a Goten or a Trunks or a Sun Gohan Adolescence, which is pretty cool. But for the most part, it's not like consistent enough. In constructed, you know, you, uh, you usually when you play a card like Kawasu, there's like 15 to 20 gods in your deck as targets. What do you think the odds are that you're gonna have, uh, you know, a ton of Gohans, Gotens, and Trunkses in your pre-release pool? It's 
you know, pretty much unlikely. So for that reason, I'm going to give Videl a three. Uh, for very similar reasons to why I gave Piccolo a three. It's just there are better one-cost cards that draw cards than Videl. Her value goes up to about as high as I'd say maybe uh, a five. And that's only if you're, you know, pushing somewhere around like seven to ten targets. The smaller deck size at 40 cards really helps out uh, in consistency and hitting, uh, you know, any of the targets that she can search for. But again, you have to hit a, a critical mass to basically do what, you know, the Raditz or the Wilderness Training Sun Gohan already do at one cost. Next up is Coco Village Princess. While not technically a can trip, uh, limited is a format where this kind of effect really excels. Being able to pitch a useless card to filter through your deck, especially without the fear of decking out because you're just going to reshuffle, means that you can pitch cards that are useless in the moment and start refueling and you know digging for those bombs and those one ofs that really you know bring out all the power in your deck. I would be thrilled to uh, play. You know, this on turn one every single game, this kind of effect in every single deck. And for that reason, I'm going to give Coco an 8. Really, really strong start. If you go first and you open this, you know you're pretty much in for a good game if you have a turn two and turn three play to follow it up with. All right, next up we have Coco's Grandpa. No, just, just no, just don't play it. Please just promise me, just do not play this card. We want to play Coco, Village Princess on one. We don't want to be playing a two drop 5k first off. That's horrible rate. And then it gets us all, uh, you know, the Coco for us to be able to play on turn three. That's, that's just terrible. It's terrible. On turn three, we want to be dropping a three drop 15k or, you know, a two drop plus a one drop cantrip or, you know, a potential, t you know, three drop rare or something like that. We really don't want to be playing two drop 5k into one drop. That's a really weak play that pretty much guarantees that if your opponent has a good aggressive start, you are going to lose the game. And for that reason, I'm going to give Coco's Grandpa a two. All right, so next up we have Elder Village Guardian. Uh, two cost for 10k, like we said with Goten Trunks, not the worst rate, but the only reason that this card is going to end up getting the rating that it will get is because you know, it could it could go lower. I'm going to just straight up tell you now. It's going to get a 4. This could be a 2 or a 3. The only reason I'm going to give this card a 4 is because there is one niche scenario that is pretty uh, clutch with this card. And that is when you have no cards in your deck, you can basically combo with this card and stack your deck so that the top 3 cards are all the bombs. So you can recycle them at, uh, at a rate that is slightly faster than if you shuffled the deck normally. So it's kind of like this like clutch one of. If you had to play uh, a 40th card in your deck, like you just couldn't figure out what else to play in your sealed pool, uh, this you could do much worse than Elder, and that one of clutch factor could be pretty good. He's better than some of the cards, like I said, like Piccolo and Videl that are threes, just because he does have that random clutch factor. But for the most part, you know, I think you could just be playing better cards. Next up, we have Natade Village Monster. I believe that is how you say it. Two drop 20k. If you guys watched any other limited videos that I have done in the past, boom, eight. No questions asked. Two drop 20k. Like, honestly, this is probably the best common that you can open. It's just really, really strong rate. Um, it beats most three drops and even can trade up with four drops, which is amazing value amazing value you just snatch all of these that you can if you see them uh, pass by you in draft and if you open this card in pre-release you just you know if you have enough red I should say you just jam it all of them next up we have shaman ritual monster two drop 5k like we said with grandpa is a terrible rate but at least it replaces itself the best part about this card is that when you it's you place it you can place it in the drop area when your opponent loses a life to summon this card which as we already established is really nuts so this card basically is an extra copy of a Natade village monster in your deck and it draws you a card and for that reason I'm gonna give it a seven uh, I would probably only play one of these but if you have two monsters and one of this guy you're pretty much guaranteed to have a strong turn to start almost every game if you try to aggressively mulligan for that opening 
Next up, we have our second super rare, which is Broly Counter Reversal. Um, so this card is 4-drop 20k single strike, which is not the best because, again, 4-drop 20k double strike is usually what we're shooting for. However, he does have the ability to be 25k and attack uh, cards in active mode, which is really good. So this is basically red repeatable removal, and that's the kind of stuff that will win you games. The counter ability is nice, but it's not going to happen as often as it would in Constructed, especially since most negates in this format are at the rare level. So it's really uncommon that your opponent will actually have a negate out of something outside of something like uh, the Gohan that we previously talked about that is a negate on a body. So yeah, the counter play... Like the counter skill to burn for one, it may happen once a game with all the counter plays and the negates, which is nice. But the real value of this card is just a 25k that can attack problematic uh, battle cards or setup cards like Coco. If you think you can't end the game and your opponent is just running away with the consistency. So for that reason, I'm going to give Broly an 8. Excellent card. Doesn't win you games uh, outright when you play it, but it can basically start to snowball the game back into your favor if they don't deal with it. Alright, so now we are moving on to the extra cards. First up is Familial Bonds. So, you're basically going to always pay two for this card. There is no red leader, there is no wish leader that I am aware of that will let you get, you know, to be able to play this for free off of a desire in your pre-release pool, in your draft games. So this is basically always just going to be two costs to play uh, a Saiyan that costs 15 or less. So with that in mind, this is basically just an extra copy of your Gotens, your Trunkses, and your Sun Gohan Adolescences. You're basically only playing this card as a one-of in your deck to try to you know hit the those cards to trigger combos or to just create extra pressure at a slightly cheaper cost. So for that reason, we're going to just give Familial Bonds a 6. Who boy, uh, Dormant Legend is next. Um, it's really, really hard for me to evaluate this card. So, for first off, you need to be the Broly leader to really want to play this card. Uh, two, you need to be in green-red because the only real target that you can consistently grab off of Dormant Legend is the red-green Broly that is an uncommon and requires you to be in two colors. So, that's really, really, really... That's rough. Third off, the Broly that you can get off of this effect can't be played if Dormant Legend is in your drop. And the nature of how Limited works now is when you deck out, you shuffle back in. So it is possible to have the Broly in your hand and brick because you ended up having to reshuffle. And now it is stuck in your hand forever until you somehow redraw the Dormant Legend. And that is just, you know, one, two, three strikes in my book. Honestly, I'm going to give it a 1. I could be as high as a 5, but I personally, even if I open Broly, would not even waste the deck slot on Dormant Legend unless you just have this like critical mass of 4-drop Broly's. Like you open the Super Rare and like 2 or 3 copies, in which case I would probably jump it to maybe a 4 or 5. But I really just do not believe you should be wasting your deck space on Dormant Legend in Limited. <clears throat> Now for a significantly better Broly extra card, Denial of Hope. So this card basically kills everything in the format. Anything that is not a super rare for the most part is 20k or less in this format. This is a, uh, like a, a counter spell. It's, it's amazing. Um, if you are already ahead on board and you drop a Denial of Hope when they try and play like a blocker or, you know... A, like a, an Atade monster or something to try and swing the game back in their favor. This card just says, nope. It really is a denial of hope. Resolving one copy of this card at a clutch moment just like auto wins the game. Um, it won't win the game outright, but it just, if you're already at parity or ahead of your opponent, it just snowballs the game way out of control. And for that reason, I'm going to give it an 8. And then the final card we will be talking about today is the Final Guardian, which is a one-cost negate, and you can replay it again, and that is good. Uh, defensive options are pretty much slim pickings in Limited, so you have to take them when you can get them, 
It's a little bit unfortunate that this card is at the rare slot, which means it's more of a premium than the standard negates across other sets, uh, such as World Martial Arts Tournament, where they're at the common and uncommon level. So, yeah, Final Guardian, I'm going to give it an 8, just because it gets you two negates for one card, which is pretty good value. All right, guys, so my apologies. Yes, so that will wrap it up for the red cards. We will talk about the blue cards next time, then the green, and then the yellow, and then finally, as I said, we will wrap it up with the black and multicolor cards. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I will be sure to answer them. If you have any other questions about pre-release or getting ready for your pre-release, you know, by all means, ask. There will be a cheat sheet that I will have for you 3XG Patreons at the end of next week, just in time for the pre-release. For those of you guys who are looking for a little handy-dandy uh, sheet of paper that you can carry with the best commons and uncommons for each color. All right, guys. Until next time, K-bye. Okay,